Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Best and Action here on Transistor. And in the top right-hand corner we have the White Protoss player. It is Best. And on the left side of the map, it is the Blue Zerg player. His name is Action. At least according to the StarCraft Remastered ladder list on Liquipedia. All right, so Transistor is a very, very interesting map. Right, right. You have expansions on high ground in the middle of the map. Well, basically the middle of the map, and they are huge. Lots of places to drop for storms, lots of places to drop lurkers, and there are a lot of expansions, and every single one has a gas geyser, okay? Okay, that is your high level view. Go away that, go away this. All right. Awesome. Where are we? Are we going pool first here? Mr. Action? No, no, we are not. Cool. Fantastic. Again, you may notice there's a join button below this video. It allows you to join the Falcon Paladin YouTube channel for $5 a month. Oh, wait. Technically, it's $4.99, but if you're in America, you probably have tax on that. I did have somebody ask the other day if that's a regional thing because they don't have the join button. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe if you live in, like, Italy or New Zealand or something, you don't get it. He didn't say where he was, mind you, but... He was, uh, he was very confused about that. Oh, hold on a second. Let's forget. Let's not forget this part. Yep, there's the, there's the Fog of War. Anyway, I'm casting four Brood War games per week, you guys. Four Brood War games, and how, mu how much StarCraft 2? One, two, three, four, five. Five? And five StarCraft 2 a week? It's a lot. It's a lot of StarCraft, you guys, but I love both games. I can't bring myself to bring down the StarCraft 2 casts. Can't bring myself to bring down the Rudor casts. You all deserve amazing StarCraft 2, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, anyway, if you feel like supporting me, you can do that. You can subscribe to me on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. You can also donate. There's a PayPal link on my channel there, but just Falcon Paladin at gmail.com is my PayPal address. Anywho, I appreciate all the support and I've, loved, uh, I've gotten from you guys recently. I've cast some really fun games uh, in the recent days and weeks as well, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed casting. And let's get the show on the road. Ah, yes, Transistor is the weird map where you have two ramps that both lead into your main base and your expansion down here. Knowing how to wall off as a Protoss and a Terran on Transistor is like its own class in StarCraft school. It's just very weird that way. All right, so Zealot heading on out. Zealot says the best defense, honestly, is a good offense. That was a hatch first play into a pool here. No gas quite yet. Out of action. APM over 400, which is insane. But... It is what it is. Are there multiple... Man, I feel like there are multiple drones running around here. And there are from Action. He really wants to know what's going on. Also, he's taking a quick third right after that gas gets taken. So he's feeling incredibly aggressive. Which you can do because check this action out. It's expansion. Expansion from best. Boy, check this action out. I am just accidentally punting all over the place. Actually, that's something I was discussing with my podcast partner, Somicron, the other day. Falcon Paladin Hour. Search Falcon Paladin on your podcast app. We were talking about the concept of puns and whether or not you can do one by accident. And I said, I do accidental puns all the time, where I say something with no intent to make it a pun, and then two seconds later my brain says, hey, that was a pun, and I go, oh, huh, how surprising. I say that's not a pun. I think intent matters. If somebody else recognizes the pun, it's almost like they're responsible for it existing. I don't know. It's a very confusing concept. Intent is hard to prove anyway, and how intent matters when it comes to facts is also another thing. Man, this probe... Really getting some good scouting information done, despite the number of lings that are out. And this is a map where you want to get a lot of lings early, because, again, this is super hard to hold off if you want to expand early as Protoss. Probe's coming down. They recognize. They saw the ling flood. That probe did a good job recognizing what was coming and relaying that information back home. Is there another zealot on the way? There is, but that is moving slow. That progress bar. Going to try to hold with one zealot. Are there lings out here, too? Yeah, if these guys move, then these ones are going to swing in. This is really pretty fantastic. I'm loving this. Out of action, but great positioning from best. Holy crap, that was amazing. Two zealots show up, and now two zealots. I don't want to say they can hold against infinite number of lings. They can hold against a lot of lings, because lings are best so they can surround the zealots and hit them from multiple angles. If only one or two of them can hit the zealot at a time, they're not killing it fast enough, and they are absolutely slaying your zerglings. So walling off is genius so far and really effectively done. I've seen lesser players... Actually, I maybe have seen better players than Best struggle with this. And he knows how to do it. He basically just goes ahead, throws up two zealots on the wall, gets a cannon in the middle, expands, starts probing up as hard as he can. He's going for a Stargate, as you traditionally do in this matchup. And 
everything looks good, honestly, from best. I'm very impressed with him at his 315 APM at this stage of the game. Overlord placement is pretty fantastic. We got Lings out here, too, from the Zerg player. He is working on a macro hatch. It is natural. He is uh, droning up at his third and doesn't really seem to be interested in going for any tech at this point. He's pulled all of his workers off of gas. Wow, what does that tell us? He's sitting at about 100 gas. He could go for a lair if he wanted. What's that going to be? Hydrolisk den. All right. So he's going to go Hydras. I don't know what else he would be doing with no gas income at this stage. Is that another? Wow, okay. Two macro hatches at his natural base. And he puts the workers back on gas. He just wanted to have the extra mineral income to drone up a bit. He's still making four or five workers at a time, mind you. But uh, he still wants to have that income. So these lings could be drones. I, I mean, they forced some zealots out here. Which I don't think the best wanted to do, but he was kind of forced into it. Corsair cruising on in here. And you know what? That Hydralisk den is done just barely done working on speed for the hydras and now starting hydra timings but the corsair is going to have a bit of a moment with which to try to kill some overlords where nothing really can shoot shoot him at all and yeah it's 42 hits we've talked about this before it's 42 hits to kill an overlord it's amazing i don't know how many shots this is this corsair is going to get one but also getting shot at by a header is not good, so he's going to flee on out of there. Definitely a dude, right? The sound that they make, Chukokuzul, whatever it is. It's a very deep, deep protossi sounding sound. Another macro hatch! What is with Zerg players going crazy with macro hatches? Jadong did this. Jadong did this versus, uh, who did he play? It was Rain. In my last CVP that I cast, Jadong went for, uh, it was, it was like two macro hatches at his third base and three at his fourth base, and it was so much macro. And it really paid off for him in the end here, too, so I'm loving this. I'm liking what I'm seeing here out of action immensely. That's a lot of Zealots, though. Holy crap. That's a lot of Zealots. We've got Zealot legs on the way. Four Zealots at a time being produced. It's like a Zealot Corsair attack. Not Dark Templar Corsair, but Zealot Corsair. This is pretty much all the computer does. If you ever play against the computer in Brood War, like in a 1v1 scenario, and they're Protoss, they will just go mass zealot at you and try to kill you that way and it's actually pretty good if you don't know what you're doing oh crap lings got inside how do lings get inside the house i'm not sure they can do much because the zealots are here where are the zealots going they should come over here and just attack this way maybe they want to go for the third which isn't all that well defended although a second sunken is now popping macro hatch is there corsair scouting on in hiders chasing those guys away lings getting into this mineral line a little bit and some probes are going to die no question about it. The Zealots are hammering, though, getting some decent hits off. But here comes the Zealot attack. I love the positioning of the Sunkins and the Hydras here. The Sunkins are getting some serious hits off. The Lings and the Hydras are all dead, though. And as a result, drones are forced to fight against this Zealot incursion. The Sunkins are doing so much work, though. Finally, only a couple Zealots remain. Actually, I lied. There are several more Zealots coming in. But enough Lings and Hydras joining the party here, too, that I think the third base is going to be fine. Some drones ended up dead. One of the Sunkins died, but all the Zealots are going to get cleaned up here, no problem. Corsair is here to take down more Overlords. Further supply blocking action. But no, not able to get any more kills. More Zealots wandering in, but they are actually outnumbered by Hydras here. And with Sunken support, that means your Hydras are going to do just fine. Really, Hydras are glass cannons. As long as they're not being actively hit, they're going to be just fine against a lot of stuff. However, Zealots get into that natural mineral line, forcing the drones to flee from that position. To see if the Hydras don't have the sunken support. It's harder for them to do what they want to do here, defensively or offensively. We don't have anything to shield for them, right? So these Zealots, a lot of them are in the red. Two of them in particular. A couple are missing entirely all of their shields. So yeah, I think the Hydras are going to be just fine here. Their HP counts are much higher and... Sure, the micro's not amazing here, but all the Zealots end up dead. More Zealots cruising on in. I have not seen this much Zealot play out of a Protoss since Bisu did this to a Zerg and killed him in about 10 minutes again that I cast fairly recently. Actually, probably months ago at this point, but the third base is in trouble. Zealots are here. Both Sunkins are down. All of the drones have to evacuate from this position now. The Hydra Force is going to show up and try to do something about it, but guess what? More Zealots wandering into the fray here. They have plus one attack. The Hydras don't have any attack upgrades at all, nor are any in production. But Aspire is just about done here for the Zerg player action, and in fact, it's right there. We've got Storm coming on in, Templar Archives, done for best now. He's going for High Templar. He's getting a robotics facility. He's trying to get the tech that he needs to deal with these Hydras. But man, once a Zerg player is on three bases and they have this many macro hatches, it can really start to snowball out of control for the Zerg player. He's down in supply, yes, but about the 10, 11, 12 minute mark is where he's really gonna start to swing ahead. 
in that count. I'd like to see him take his third Vespine Geyser. If he's going to go this many Mutas and this many Hydras, he needs the gas. But just five or six Mutas in production at a time going for missile attacks for his Hydras. It seems like the long-term plan is definitely continuing into the Hydralisk play. A lot of Hydras sitting in here nestled gently between two hatcheries. I keep thinking this is an expansion, but it's just a big old mineral patch instead. Just to make sure you can expand here early on, it's very safe for Zerg to do so. That's all this is. Makes it not worth it for Zerg to take their third away across the map here. It's a three-player map, and just for that particular reason, that's why that giant mineral patch exists. Hey! Maelstrom coming in. All right, White. We're going to have some talks about this. We can talk about Maelstrom if you want. Muta's trying to harass, but there are three cannons in that mineral line. And two coming on here into the main two with Corsairs. And that is actually, by golly, a Dark Archon. Oh my gosh, more Dark Archon play. Remember that time a few months ago? It seemed like every ZVP that I cast had Dark Archons, and it was beautiful and amazing, and I loved it. We're back. We're back, baby, with more Dark Archon-style play. These Mutas say we outnumber you about 6 to 1. And if we micro and spread properly, we can actually kick your butt. So get on out of here, Corsair. No one likes your style. Best is trying to take a third base along the right side. As well as, man, that Maelstrom. Maelstrom is so good. Maelstrom Storm is such a brutal combo. I don't know why we don't see more Protoss players use it. I guess Storm on its own is just devastating enough. But, man, being able to lock units into place with Maelstrom and then kill them with Storm where they can't dodge or run at all is absolutely just disgusting to behold. It's so good against Hydras. It's so good against Mutalisks. It doesn't lock them into place. It just slows them down a lot, but effectively keeps them in place while Storm chews on their faces. Hive coming up now from Action. And the Zealots coming on back home. High Templar, a couple Dragoons present. So the anti-air is really going to have to be cannons for the time being. Although Best is working on five Dragoons at a time. I'd love to see Action take a fourth base. He's been safe for quite some time here. Ah, see that drone is thinking about it, but there's a Zealot right on close. The Muta's coming to get rid of this guy. Hey, this is our neighborhood. You can't stop us from building condos here. What do you think this is? Fern Gully. And the Zealot gets wrecked. All right, tidy move out for best seems entirely possible. Hey, I just bought my I bought my tickets for John Wick three. I'm so excited for this, so excited for John Wick three. I think it comes out a couple days after this thing posts, but the first two John Wicks were just so much fun. Keanu, he's just one of the best like action movie stars of all time. He can't really act if you ask him to do too much, but if you keep him low key like he is with John Wick as the lurker spines, you're stabbing away at this army and keeping them away because they don't have any detection. Really? You don't have any detection with you? You have a robotics facility. Where are your observers? I guess he doesn't have them. But yeah, if you just bring Keanu into a John Wick role and say, hey, you need to emote a tiny bit about a dead dog mostly and then just get mad and murder people, he can do that. 100%. One of the best like actor shooters that we have too. His firearm use is just as close to the real thing as you're going to get. Anyway, John Wick 3. Good times. Not sponsored by John Wick 3, by the way. I wish I was some sponsorships for stuff that I love. I don't mind talking about things that I'm into. Anyway, now we get an Observer. Best is like, you know what? Uh, I, I didn't expect Lurker Aspect for some reason. Dude, this Zerg player has been on three bases forever. Has a million macro hatches. It's taking a fourth base now with Lurkers defending it, and you didn't think they had Lurker Aspect? I guess not. Defiler Mound in production now. Plague is going to be a big deal here for action. APM around 260 at this stage. Pretty darn big, scary Protoss army, man. That's a lot of Zealots and Dragoons. They got plus two attack on these ground units. The Archon has 170 energy. That is enough for a Maelstrom for sure. So what are we going to do? Oh, is this a swing around? This is a bit of a wraparound attempt. Out of best. Or maybe he's just going to counterattack while the Protoss is away from home. He's thinking about it. If he brings those Lings in, I think he could do it. But he's worried about this push. So single Hydra, the Sentry... Letting the Zerg know the army is coming in from the backside, though, too. Here come some Lings, but the Zealots are on it. All right. So, action trying to get a bit of a surround here, but the positioning out of Bess is absolutely fantastic. He's coming in with Lings versus the... Oh, okay. All right. The Lings not doing that well. Versus that Storm. Dragoons versus Lurkers is what you want. I don't know what he's pulling back for, man. He's just worried about this Ling Muta Force waving around up north. Distracting crap out of his army. I don't. I feel like he could push on this. Probably take down that hatch, but he doesn't want to. I don't know what it is. He's just maybe. All right, plans have changed. Let's go for that third base. The third base is delicious. Overlord does escape with exactly 10 HP. Lings rolling in by themselves is not what you want, but Lurker Spine's actually getting some decent damage off while the Lings are being dealt with. So his meat shields 
They're not too bad. Mutas are here to deal with these Zealots. Free Zealots. Dragoons getting picked off by Lings. Oh, this is such a good engagement right now for action. Getting some free kills there, effectively. Sure, the Lings all die, but they're effectively expendable at this point. I mean, the Zerg player it, it really just needs a mineral dump. Going for a lot of Lurkers, which means that's a lot of gas, which means you have a ton of minerals you don't need, which could be drones, but also could be Lings. No problem. And this pylon, actually, I think it's going to survive here. These Dragoons are serious business. With their plus two attack, and the pylon survives with exactly 31 HP. Zealots cruising around the north here, trying to find an area to attack. Maybe a base to get rid of, but there's not one there. You don't have to worry about it. Bottom right-hand corner also has not been dealt with by anybody at this stage. Drone was coming down here to do something, or maybe up here to do something, but either way, he dead. 176 to 177 supply. This is what I'm talking about right now. Action is okay. He's caught up. He's even with the Protoss player. Both players are looking like they're going to max out at some stage here. Zergling trying to get up this ramp. Zealots holding the line with that cannon support. Plus two. Plus three is just about done right now. Arbiter recall coming in for best. And just more and more lurkers with upgrades and more macro hatches out of the Zerg player. He really hasn't been bothered all that much, really. The most he's lost in this game are two Sunkins here at the third. He hasn't lost a hatch. He hasn't lost any tech structures at all. This does not bode well for Best. Not, I mean, again, on the other hand, not that Action has been able to take down any of Best buildings either. So, but a lot of trades have happened here. A lot of blows have happened. But in all, nobody's really taken too much damage, if I do say so myself. Zergling's patrolling around. I heard some drop lords. Here they are. Here's a big drop. Hydras, Lings, Lurkers, and I assume there are a couple defilers in here somewhere? There's one at least. Therefore, the Dark Swarm that really makes that drop potent. Without Dark Swarm, it's not as good. But Dark Swarm versus Cannons is just not fair. It's so amazing. All right, White wants to take this. He wants to take this whole new main for himself, but here comes the drop. Unloading, Hydras, Lurkers burrowing. The cannons can't even stand without Dark Swarm present. This is a lot of Zerglings, friends. A lot of Zerglings. The Dark Swarm comes up in a weird, weird place. I'm not sure what that is. The responding Ze Zealot Archon army trying to do stuff, but this natural is done. There's no saving it. Bunch of gateways are getting hammered on, but none have actually gone down. It seems like action not really focusing on anything but that Nexus. And then maybe these two pylons depower these gates. That'd be pretty fantastic, honestly. Maybe you could do that. So that gateway's down. This gateway is going to go down here, too. The Archon coming in to deal with these Lings. Depowered gateways everywhere up along this top side. Also, ones that are down. The army finally shows up to clear this out. And yeah, a Zealot Archon army is going to be just fine here. They catch a plague, but overall they don't care. We even have a Dark Templar in the mix. Full energy, full energy Dark Archon. Could be crazy stuff here. Nice Dark Swarm attack here at the fourth base of best two. But Zealots, too many Zealots actually. Not enough Lurkers, which is not a situation you see all that much, honestly. Wow, ton of Lurkers went down there. That was a huge problem. Both players are just taking heavy weight. Swings at each other's faces right now, connecting a little bit. Archon cannons rolling in. I don't think the Dark Swarm is in quite the position for Lings to do anything here. Although, great defensive swarm there. Fantastic stuff. Lings and Lurker's going to shut down this attempt to take that expansion. Take that starting position by best. Lings trying to come in at the same time instead of trickling in two or three or four at a time. There, nice dark swarm catching. Oh, that poor Dragoon just did not stand a chance. Getting on top of ye old High Templar there would be pretty good too. Lurker's coming in. Great storms on top of the Lurkers as they're setting up. And they are getting wrecked by the storm this is so good out of best right now by golly this game might just get an epic tag just by how well both players are playing right now great defense keeps the base natural base goes down but fourth base survives we got more zerg swarming on in from the left side right now from the south but the archons with their plus three attack are ready to rock thank you very much Lurkers trying to get an induced off. Great storms. Nice dark swarms there, too. Lurkers coming in and burrowing inside. Hydra's under dark swarm. Lurkers under dark swarm. And I think this base is going to go down. The dark argon hasn't really had much to do. It turns out still. Oh, actually, maybe they cast a maelstrom that I missed at some point. Up here in the north, perhaps. But there's just so much action going on everywhere. The storms, not enough, I don't think, to save this nexus. As best as pulling back from that position. 
Action is expanded along the left side now, too. And it's just Lurker Spines, man. That's all it is. Plus two attack is done. These Defilers very pleased with themselves. And the way they were able to help take down this fourth and best is in a world of hurt. He's lost two bases and has killed zero of his opponent. Although, this fifth base seems like it's in a world of hurt right now. That might just be a cancel. Oh, now actually trying to expand action. He's trying to take this space that Best was trying to take a second ago. That spawning location. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really see action responding fast enough to save this hatchery. Again, plus three zealots are just amazing stuff. Good. Oh, it's a recall. A recall of Archons and High Templar. And Dark Archon here too. Storm in that link group on the top left side. That is fantastic stuff right now. Archons take down the hatch. There we go. Two bases down now for best. That's what we need to see out of the Protoss player making it happen. Happen. Lurkers without the benefit of Dark Swarm not actually doing all that well. Nice Dark Swarm positioning. The Zealots and the Archons need to get in there and do something. Another Dark Swarm comes up defensively this time. And the Dragoons are in trouble right now. Any Storms available on you, High Templar? Not really. You guys have stormed yourselves. Making it happen. Another drop of the natural pace of best though these players are absolutely brutal and merciless when it comes to dropping on each other right now and whacking each other's bases i still think action has an advantage there's a lot of dead lurkers though and this is still here this is still here from best is he doing more stuff he's doing more stuff with zealots inside the main base trying to kill drones drones on gas the overlord's getting wrecked here i think best might have turned the tides a little bit at least He's making some good trades at the very least here. He has killed a ton of lurkers. An absolute metric ton of lurkers in this game. So many lings have died too. Units lost for action is going to be through the roof right now. Look at that poor Templar spinning around in circles. I received a command from you, Arbiter. I don't know what to do. And these guys are still here. I can't believe it. Transitioning into these Archons is a really standard Protoss late game play, though. However, it is 157 and 106 supply. I just got to say, I f feel like Foff's economy is fantastic. He's making 12 Lings at a time. I don't know if Lings are what you want versus all of these Zealots and these Dark Templar and these Archons. By golly, has Best actually done it here? Nothing is in production for the Zerg player, but one Hydra and a bunch of Zerglings, which is not going to be enough. Although getting chased back a little bit, sniping off one of those High Templar is good. This army needs to move in. Might as well take down these hatcheries if you need to. You have detection. That Lurker is not going to withstand against you for very long. So play catching mostly Archon, which is a bit of a whiff, but several of these Zealots actually do catch it too now that I'm looking at more closely. Archon's trying to fight here. I don't even know. This is incredibly close. I think best... Needs to get something done here in the next couple of minutes. Where do these guys go? They get recalled out? They got recalled out. I don't know that they died. I really don't. That Archon has 24 kills. He's dead, though. Sadly for him. I mean, might as well take some lings with you, man. Are you just scout really just a scouting Archon here? That's a lot of gas. There we go. Taking a bunch of lings with him, and by golly, he's still alive. And he's going to get a Defiler? And a drone! Oh my gosh, this guy! This Argon has 31 kills, and he's going to take down the Defiler Mound. What is going on right now? Army going after the fifth base here. Actions trying to hold on to. Not working very well. Wow! This Archon took down the Defiler Mound. A Defiler and like 34 other units. That was insane! That is a hero Archon for sure. If best wins this game, that is the MVP Archon of this match. Scourge getting wiped out as they start popping up here. 19 kills and 11 kills on these Archons. His fifth base is going down. There's just not enough to save it here. It's just Lings, man. It's Lings and it's Lurkers being produced by the Zerg player. I don't think it's enough versus this composition. This is just so neck and neck. Although, again, the Filer's getting taken down. Action is up in overall supply by quite a bit, but I think a lot of that's Workers. I think that might be that he just has more Workers than best does and that doesn't help you in a straight up fight you can't bring drones to this archon zealot fight you will die lings hopping up trying to get stuff done very smartly pulling back to the safety of their friends there yeah man i mean best has some income it's a little bit though his natural still has money because it's been killed twice 
His third base is looking fantastic. His fourth base has never been really established here. Best, I think he needs, like I said, a decisive Protoss win and an engagement here. Not, I'm not talking about winning the whole game, but just a match where he just absolutely crushes the Zerg. And he might be able to ride that to victory here. Man, these Zealots are scary. Nice plague, though. Right on time. 3-1-1. The Defiler gives his life for that. Ling Hydra versus Zealot Archon. Seems like what you want here if you have enough Hydralisks, but I don't know that you do. The Hydra's picking off the Observers or trying to do so so the Lurkers can do their terrible, terrible damage. The Zealots are falling, but so many Lings and Hydras are going down here too. Too many Lurkers for the Archons to deal with. I don't know, man. I feel like you could have pushed on that. More Lings waiting in, laying in wait there. Waiting in wait, I was going to say. Waiting in wait there. More High Templar in production. He says, I need more Storm is what I need. I've got a High Templar. And he has enough energy, actually, for a couple Storms. There we go. Beautiful Storm, but four Lurkers defending there. I don't know. I feel like the Lurkers can get in there and do something about this, but they are just being so passive right now. 136 to 74 supply. The Zerg player is up. He has reestablished his fifth base, and he's taken his sixth base, two back. Which is massive, because Best is not replacing his bases at all right now. I worry for you, Protoss player. Felt like you had it in ya. But it's not looking good for you right now. I can tell you that much. The longer you let action sit back and macro up and get more income and get more stuff, he's just building stuff faster than you are. However... Again, a lot of it is Lings. A lot of it is Lings, and these Archons do not even worry about your Zerglings. 28 kills on this Archon, guys. He didn't get any kills during that engagement either. That's a lot of Hydralisks, Zealots. Getting some stuff done. The Lurker back here has just been stabbing the whole time. Good Storm on these Lurkers, weakening them immensely, but... Oh, no, the Archons are dead. And that's your good game! Yeah! That's what I thought would happen there. It just, the longer Best waited without replacing that fourth base, the more he needed to do something, and the longer he waited without pushing, he was going to get surrounded like that. Then a Zerg army was going to come out of nowhere and wipe it out. End of play there. Archon, 30 kills and 27 kills on these dudes. Nicely done. Nicely done, guys, but just too much Zerg. Too many macro hatches, too much replacing bases that had been killed and able to redrone them up. That was a huge part of it. This base was dead, and look at it now. This base was dead, and look at it now. Yeah, man. Action. His macro was through the roof in this match. Best was just not quite able to keep up. Losing your natural base twice is rough. Losing your fourth base, fourth base and never replacing it is just unovercomable. You can't beat it. Not when the Zerg player has this many macro hatches. Not when he has this much stuff going on. Did replace his third, by the way. Never actually took the gas, though, it doesn't look like. But one of the hatchery, I guess. Maybe with the, the minerals that were here a minute ago. Wow. Good one. I think that's getting an epic tag. I do. I think that was a really, really great game of StarCraft Brood War. Again, I think best. There were a couple times where I feel like he could have pushed in. But uh, it's hard to say. There were like three or four lurkers here and a bunch of lings and hiders up here. And I think maybe if he'd pushed, these guys swarm in to reinforce and bad things happen. I think overall the army supply was just too much to handle. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Hmm. All right, 21,000, 210,000 points, 185,000 points. I struggle with this because there aren't commas. But anyway, yeah, man, 850 units produced out of action. 857. On the contrary, Protoss produced 233. He produced 25% as many units as action did. How weird is that? That's incredible stuff. Killed 645, which is just impressive. That means like 200 units remained. It was just not... Not acceptable. A bunch of consumes happened there, too. A lot of drones turned into buildings. That's where the math adds up. And, I mean, here's your story. This is it, right? Seven. So, okay, just we're going to do addition and subtraction. 4,000 gas mined here more than the Protoss player for the Zerg. 9,000 more minerals mined. And a full... Can we do this? 
15 is that 15,000 more resources spent for action yeah man just outclass the protoss player almost from start to finish in this game but some really really good drops out of the protoss some great engagement some really hero archons just not enough not enough in the end all right fantastic that is gonna be it from me this has been falcon paladin coming at you with yet another edition of starcraft brood war remastered I'll go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.